Good evening, and welcome to Newcastle After Dark. We are your hosts, the management. Coming to you from the land of the Pinella Company and Germani's Jewelry, bringing you films that are a feast for the mind. Tonight's film is the Overlook Classic, 1965's The Nanny, starring Betty Davis. This has Pamela Franklin, James Villers, and Jill Bennett. And it is a psychological thriller. Yeah, this is this is a great suspenseful movie. It is, and it's a Hammer film. It is, um, and this would be Hammer's last film in black and white. Yes. Yeah. And uh, like we said, this is an overlooked gem, so get ready for Betty. That's right. So sit back, relax, and enjoy 1965's The Nanny. What will anybody think? I can't help it, Phil. I'm sorry. Of course you could help it. You're just being stupid. Oh, darling, please. I'm sorry, Virgie. I've put up with your childish whims long enough. It's high time you started behaving like an adult. You're a mother. You have a ten-year-old son who's coming home today. You've got responsibilities. You've got to face up to them. Oh, don't bully me, please. Darling, I'm not bullying you. I'm simply stating facts. For heaven's sake, stop that crying.
Joe is going to have to rely on you. Now, if you've quite finished, I suggest you go and wash your face and put some makeup on. You look terrible. I can't, Bill. I can't. Oh, Virginia, for heaven's sake, pull yourself together! <laughs> I've got ten minutes, I'll meet you downstairs. <laughs> oh, Nellie, you're back. Mrs. Fane doesn't want to go. She's been getting ready all week, and now she doesn't want to go. I'll talk to her, sir. Yes, I wish you would. She won't listen to me. I'm just going to get the car. Would you ask her to be downstairs in ten minutes? What's this I hear? We don't want to go to fetch Master Joey. I'm frightened, Manny. I'm frightened. What is there to be frightened about? I, I don't know. Having Joey home again. He's been in that place quite long enough. I'm frightened I won't know him. He won't know me. It's been two years. Of course he'll know you. You're his mother. It's not as though you haven't been to visit him. I know. But, Nanny, I don't want him home. Oh, no, Nanny, I don't mean that. It's just that... It, it's just that I don't know if I can manage anymore ever since... Ever since... I can't seem to do anything. I'm not going, Nanny. You will have to tell Mr. Fane then, madam. Oh, no, Nanny. You tell him. I've got a terrible headache. Then I have. Nanny, you go with Mr. Fane. Joe, you'll like that. Very well, madam, as you wish. I'll go and fetch my hat and coat. Madam, are you quite sure you'll be all right? Yes, really, Nanny, I will be all right. Better get along. You know how Mr. Fane is if he's kept waiting. I'm here, darling. I am put you on to mummy. Yes, darling, you are. Joey says I'm ugly, but I'm not ugly, am I? Of course not. Why do you say I love them? Oh, brothers are like that sometimes. I'm putting you on to <laughs> Much prettier. When I grow up, I'm going to be the prettiest girl in the whole world when I grow up. When I grow up.
Something will have to be done about Mrs. Fay, Nanny. This can't go on. It will work itself out, sir. Yes, you said that two years ago when all this started. Master Joey is coming home. And that's where he should be. At home where he is loved. Yes, perhaps it'll help. Now, when you're dealing with the mind of a child, you have to learn to differentiate between mental fantasies which are normal and those which are abnormal. You see, Mr. Fane, the mind of a child is full of ideas which in an adult would be considered abnormal. An adult who claims that he's Buffalo Bill is mentally sick. But what little boy doesn't claim to be the same character at least once a week? There's nothing wrong with him. Children are permitted their daydreams. You make it sound as though there's nothing wrong with any of them. No, oh, no, it's just that it's more difficult to diagnose. No, we have paranoia, schizophrenia, ambivalence, withdrawal, sibling rivalry, you name it, we've got it. Joey? Joey. What can I say about Joey? Well, he's all right, isn't he? All right. By what definition? Measured against the adult norm, no, he isn't. But then very few children are. Well, as you know, he was sent to us because he wouldn't eat and he wouldn't sleep. Now, these outward symptoms we've cured, but... Anyway, he'll be here in a moment. Mrs. Griggs has gone to fetch him. Joey! Joey! <laughs> The main thing to bear in mind, Mr. Fane, is that Joey was disturbed, mentally disturbed. We think we've cleared it up, but until he's been at home for some days, we shan't really know... I'm sorry to interrupt, Dr. Bean Master. It's Mrs. Griggs. She's after Joey again. My Joey? What is it this time, Sarah? Well... Excuse me. Where is he now? He's locked himself in the staff lavatory. Well, go and get him, will you? Do you know he won't come out? Well, tell him his father's here to take him home. What's happened? Joey has played a rather unkind trick on our Mrs. Griggs. Mrs. Griggs? Now, your son, Mr. Fane, seems to have an inborn antipathy towards middle-aged females. It's positively destructive at times. Shall we go and meet him? No damage, I trust, Mrs. Briggs. Hello, Dad. Hello, Joey. Now then, what have you been up to? Nothing. This young lady here says you've been... Through. Everything packed, Joey. Yes, sir. Well, you go along with your father. Let me... Master Joey, how you grown? Now, there's a nice surprise for you, Joey. You didn't expect Nanny to come and meet you, did you? Now, you two sit in the back together. No. Very well, then. We'll all sit in the front. No, I won't sit with her. And quite right, too. He wants to sit up front with his father. I'll sit in the back. Get in, Joey. I hate to admit failure, but with young Joey, I'm afraid. He's a monster. Well, don't be uncharitable, Sarah. Our job is to search out their little devils and exorcise them. I'm afraid we've failed Joey, failed him miserably. What sort of joke, Joey? Just a joke. I always play jokes on Mrs. Griggs. Did you dislike her, then? I hated her. 
That's a very strong word, Master Joey. It's true. What was so bad about Mrs. Griggs? She was like you. And what is that supposed to mean? Nothing. Very well, then apologize to Nanny. What for? You know perfectly well what for. Apologize to her. I don't think he meant it, sir. You didn't mean that, did you, Master Joey? Did you? Of course he didn't. Master Joey wouldn't say a thing like that on purpose. Does, madam, indeed he does. Where's Daddy? He's put him in the car away. Why couldn't you come to fetch me, Mummy? Oh well, Mummy had a very bad headache. You see, otherwise I would have. Come on, come and see your new room. Daddy's worked so hard getting it ready for you. Wait till you see it. I don't want this room. Oh. Joey, Nanny got it all ready especially for you. I don't want it. I want the small room. But, Joey, I want the small room. Darling, if this is the room you want, this is the room you shall have. Oh, but you needn't do that, darling. Nanny will do it for you. I'd rather do it myself. Making your own bed. My to grown up or you are, Master Joe. Don't do that. Joey, Nanny was just going to unpack for you. I'll do it. But, Joey. Of course he will, madam. He doesn't need his old nanny anymore. Do you, Master Joe? No, I don't. My goodness me, wherever did you get that? Don't you touch it. It's mine. I wouldn't dream of it. It stays there. We won't it disturb your rest? No. And Nanny just wants you to be comfortable, darling. Do you know how to make knots now you're such a big boy? Of course. Make about every knot there is. Fancy, Madam Master. Joey can make just about every knot there is. I can make a hangman's knot. I'll show you. Not now, darling. Nanny will have to do something about this room. It's all right. I like it just as it is. We bought you some new things, darling. We put them in the other room. We'll bring them in. No, I will. Nanny, I... Madam, I must start to prepare dinner. Where are you taking that, Joey? To my room. But it was in your room. My new room. What's all this about, this changing around of rooms? Well, he wanted the spare room. Did you let him have it? Well, it didn't seem much to ask, and he was so determined. I suppose you want one. Yes, please. What did they say at the school? Nothing. He's all right, isn't he? Of course. Otherwise, they wouldn't have let him come home. No, I just thought... How was he with Nanny? Rude. Oh, dear. I hoped all that would have changed. But, Jenna, you've got to face facts. However much we may all depend upon Nanny, the boy doesn't like her, he never did, and he never will. That's no reason to handle the affair with kid gloves. He must learn to behave like any normal child. But if he won't, he must be punished.
Be patient. Jerry, do you like this room? Yes, sir. Well, why do you like it more than the one Nanny arranged for you? Here I can look after myself. Yes, I see. Dad, how long is she going to stay? I don't quite understand you. I thought she'd be gone by now. I thought that when I got home she wouldn't be here. That made you think that? I'm ten. I don't need anyone to look after me. I did everything myself. I made my bed. I unpacked. I bathed myself. I got a bed on my own. I do everything. Yes, I know you do, Joey, but you see, Nanny is part of the family. Don't forget that she was your mother's and Aunt Penn's nanny once upon a time. I know. I know you don't need her, but your mother does. She helps in the house, she does the cooking. Without her help, well, your mother would have to do everything. Why doesn't she? I'd help her. Yes, I know you would, but your mother isn't very well and we have to look after her. We need Nanny to help us. Besides, I'm away a great deal of the time. Well, she's company for your mother. I can be company now. Yes, you can. Will you sack her then? Please. Now, look here, Joey. I'm very well aware that you don't get on with Nanny, but she's here and here she stays. Do you understand? Yes, sir. I want to hear no more about it. Yes, sir. You can um, continue playing your records, but not so loud. There's a good chance. I don't want to. Just as you please. If I catch the 915 to Rome, I can make a connection there. Yes, I know there is, but that won't get me to Beirut before midnight. Look, I'll pick the ticket up at the airport. Would you have the car collect me here at 6.45? Right, thank you. Good night. Come in. Miss Penelope is here, sir. Oh, good. Thank you, Nanny. I won't be a moment. Oh, Nanny, would you pack me a bag for tomorrow, please? To where are you travelling? Uh, Beirut. I shall be away a couple of nights. I'll pack your lightweight suit and a dinner jacket. Just in case, sir. Good. Thank you, Nanny. Watch myself very carefully. I could live to be 90. Who wants to be 90 anyway? Strict regime, of course. No exercise. Watch my diet. No worry or excitement, things like that. I mean, darling, it makes me wonder if it's worth going on at all. Why don't I have one glorious old binge and go out laughing? <laughs> Bill, does give one an insight, though. It makes one see things with different eyes. I mean, I do have a heart that might conk out on me at any moment, and you can't walk well, hand in hand with death without, well, feeling something. Hello, Pen. Dear Bill, how are you? Very well, thank you. I've got to go away tomorrow, I'm afraid. Oh, no. Sorry, darling. Can't you put it off? Now, you know I can't put it off. Of course he can't, darling. A Queen's messenger has to be ready at all times. That's right, isn't it, Bill? Yes, that's right. You should be proud, Virgie. I am. He's only my brother-in-law. I'm proud. Do you remember when we were children? You were always going to marry somebody important. You've got everything that you wanted, haven't you? Me, I've just got a bad heart. Yes, I'm very lucky. Yes, of course you are. You've even got Nanny. I could certainly do with her, I could tell you. You can have her. Joey! Oh, she can. That's quite enough, Joey. Dear Nanny, that's one of the wonders of his age, you managing to hang on to her for so long. Why she didn't get married years ago, I shall never know. We were the reason. You know that, Pen. After Mummy died, she just wouldn't leave us. Darling, that was years ago. Yes, well, then there was the accident. Nanny gave up everything to stay and look after me. Hmm. I do remember something of the sort. Still, it all turned out very nicely for you, didn't it? It's an ill wind. Pen! Well, now what have I said? <coughs> Pen, are you staying for dinner? Uh, no, Bill, thank you. And I must fly. I'm going to a concert with Marion Bowie, and she goes mad if you accept me, I think. Bye, darling. Bye, Joey. 
Nice to have you home again. Thank you, dear. I wonder if I'll get a taxi. Is Auntie Fan ill? Yes. She had dramatic fever when she was a baby. It left her with a weak heart. You mean, if she got frightened or anything, she could just drop down dead? Yes, she could. Has she got a weak heart? Who? Her. If you mean Nanny, say so. Is that who you mean? No, of course not. She's as strong as an ox. Now go and wash your hands. Dinner's nearly ready. There's a good boy. They taught you something while you were away. What do you want? I brought you a fresh towel. I don't want it. Dinner is ready, Master Joey. Ah, oh, now that looks delicious, Nanny. Mm, Joey? Nanny cooked it especially for your homecoming. Oh, and that's not all. Show him, Nanny. Welcome home, Master Joey. Nanny went out today to buy that specially for you. Wasn't that kind of her? Come along, Joey. You can start. I don't want to. Of course you do. Joey. I'm not hungry. You must be. I'm not. Joey, eat your dinner. How about a piece of cake? Nanny bought it just for you. I know. It's the excitement, madam, coming home and all. It spoiled his appetite, hasn't it, Master Joey? Nanny understands. She's on your side. No, you're not. Are you going to eat anything? No. Very well, then go to your room. Bill! To your room! I'm glad you're going away tomorrow. I hope you don't come back. We can't go through all this again. He's not eating and everything. We can't. He'll be all right, madam, I'm sure. Give him a couple of days to settle down. Virginia, for heaven's sake. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Virgie, please stop it. I can't! Blast it to hell! I'm going to the club. Bathroom door. I said there's no key in the bathroom door. I can't lock it. What do you want to lock it for, darling? I want to have a bath. Oh. There's a good boy. There's no key. Doesn't matter, does it? She'll come in. Who? Nanny. I don't want her to come in. All right, Joey. I'll tell her. Now. Please, darling, Mummy doesn't feel very well. Now, or I won't have a bath.
Tell her. Manny, please don't go into the bathroom while Joey's having his bath. Very good, madam. Swear. Swear. Very well, Master Joey. I swear. Can I do anything for you, madam? Yes, Nanny. Please, will you brush my hair? to his club, madam. It was my fault. I drove him out. You mustn't say such things. He's a very busy man. No, I drove him out. And he's got to go away tomorrow. It's not for long. He shouldn't be going away with Joey just home. I don't see he has any choice. It must be very important or they wouldn't have sent him. So. Nanny, everything's going to be all right, isn't it? Of course it is. Haven't you got your old nanny here to make sure? What are you doing out there? Mind your own business, Nosy. It is my business. That's my fire escape. Don't be daft. It's for the whole building. That's if there's a fire. There isn't, is there? No, there isn't. Now go away. What are you doing out here? If you must know, I'm waiting for a gentleman friend. Come off, Rich. You're not old enough. I'm nearly 15. When was your birthday? April. That was last month. You're only just 14. got a boyfriend. Where is he? He'll be alone. I bet he won't. What you bet? I haven't got any money. Fags? My dad's got some. All right, I bet you a fag then. Look, here he comes now. You watch, he'll stop just down there and pretend to tie his shoelaces up. What for? He always does. He's looking up your skirt. You dirty old git. What did you have to go and do that for? Well, he is. Give us the bicycle sandwich. Where do you live? Up there. My father's a doctor. Mine's a Queen's messenger. 
I know I've seen him. He's smashing. My dad? It's like a film star. He is not. Who's that? Nanny. Nanny? Are you some sort of baby or something? She looks after my mum. She used to look after me and Susie. Till Susie got killed. Killed? She was my sister. She got killed. They blamed it on to me and sent me to a place. Prison? No. Or sort of. Then was it your fault? Of course not. You still hungry? I'm dying for a fag. What about the one you owe me? Oh, I'll get it. Morning, Joey. Morning. Have some breakfast. I don't want it. No, it's so Nanny told me. What did she tell you? She said she'd seen you prowling around the kitchen. If you want to live off bread and jam for the rest of your life, it's your own business. Well, say goodbye to your mother for me. I'll see you in a couple of days. Jerry, I see you found your appetite again. I never lost it. I'm just not going to eat anything you make. I cooked your father's breakfast. Yes, but you wouldn't poison him. Madam. Master Joey has accused me of trying to poison him again. Oh, no. I'm afraid so, Miss. daylights out of that kid. I don't think you heard me. This is private property. He's just got the bloody flower box on my head. Down near killed me. But he didn't. And you're trespassing. What are you, some kind of nut? I've just told you I nearly got killed down there. If you don't remove yourself from this fire escape immediately, I shall be forced to inform your employers and they will not be pleased. Well, if you take my advice, lady, you'll have that boy seen to. He's an homicidal nut. I will thank you to keep your advice to yourself. Good morning. You silly old cow. Master Joey, that was a very dangerous and stupid thing to do. Did you hear what I said? I heard. You will have to be punished to realize that. Not by you. I will tell your father when he gets back. Now, if you would go down to the lobby and tell the head porter to send someone round to clear up the mess. No. Master Joey, I had hoped things would improve between you and I while you were away. They haven't, have they? 
I will give you one more chance, Master Joey. One more chance. Hi. Hello. Do come in. So I'd like to thank you for not dragging me into that mess down there. I would have if I thought it would have got me out of trouble. Nice room. It's my bedroom. I have a sitting room as well. What do you want with a sitting room? I entertain there. Who? Friends, boyfriends mostly. You aren't half a liar. She stuck up for you, didn't she? Who? Mary Poppins. That milkman would have broken your neck. I don't need anyone to stick up for me. She really told him. She's all right. She stinks. I think she's all right. You wouldn't if you know her like I do. What does she do? Smack your little bottom? She does. I bet she does. Does she take your trousers and stuff? She doesn't dare touch me. Oh, the big man. I bet she would if she wanted to. She wouldn't. She'd be scared. Like she was with the milkman. I bet she's never scared. I'll prove it. How? It's yours. When I was little. Come on. Where are we going? I'm going to show you how scared she is. What now? Put it in. In the water? Go on. Hurry. Not like that, idiot. This is Barney. Someone left the bath water running. Suppose you turn it off, then. I didn't turn it on. She's coming now. more than that, otherwise you wouldn't have done it. The cruelest thing I've ever heard of. I don't know what your father will say when he gets back. You don't need to tell him. Of course I have to tell him. I'm going to tell him about the milkman, too. He told me I shouldn't have let you have this room. He was right. You're not going to move me, are you? Well, that'll be his decision as soon as he gets back. Don't tell him. You mustn't. Please. You're not frightened of your father, are you? No. I just don't want to be moved out of this room. We'll see. If you tell him, I'll do something. What'll you do? Something. Oh, don't be silly, Joey. I'm going to see if Nanny's all right. You keep out of trouble. Nanny, why aren't you lying down? I'm perfectly all right, thank you, madam. You can't be. Here, let me do that. I'd prefer to keep busy, if you don't mind. What are you making? Steak and kidney pies. They're for supper. They used to be one of Joey's favorites. That's why I'm making them. You dear Nanny, you do try so hard. That's what I'm here for. To look after all of you. Excuse me, Nanny. 
Mercim. What is it, Nanny? Madam, Master Joey's been rooting round in my medicine chest. What on earth for? I don't know. He has that look on him, you know. The, the one he has when he's done something he shouldn't. I caught him sneaking round in the kitchen. What did he say to you? Oh, he never says anything to me, Madam. You know that. All right, Nanny, I'll have another word with him. Madam, it's not right you should have to cope all alone. I only wish I could help. You do help, Nanny. I do my best. Where's yours, Nanny? I'm not hungry, Madam. I'll have a little something before I go to bed. Joey, you may start. I don't want to. But it's one of your favourites. I don't want it. Have you been up to anything, Master Joey? Nanny says you've been sneaking around the kitchen. She's a liar. Joey! Well, she is. Joey! Doesn't matter, madam. I don't mind. Well, I do. Apologise to Nanny. No. Do as I say. Go to your room. I hate you. There, there, madam. Eat your supper. We must eat our supper, must we? We have to keep up our strength. One, two, three, open. Please. No <laughs> more arguments. Open. Welcome back. Well, here we have the beginnings of our film, and the person that needs no introduction is the extraordinary Betty Davis. Yeah, you know, and I think she's as good in this as anything I've seen Betty Davis in. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, critics say that her career was waning in the 60s due to her choices of films, but in any of those films, she's always Fantastic. Yeah, you know, there's no Betty Davis movie I've seen where after I've watched it, I'm like, well, you know, that was terrible, or she was terrible in it. Exactly. She could have been in Herbie the Love Bug. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? She still would have been great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. We're team Betty Davis here. All the way. All the way. Um, you know, not that we don't love Joan Crawford, because we do, but, you know, we just love Betty Davis a little more. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Team Betty Davis. All the way. Um, you have Pamela Franklin. Uh, she was in movies like In Soon the Darkness, The Legend of Hell House. She was in Necromancy, Saint and School for Girls, Food of the Gods. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, tons of movies. And she retired from acting uh, quite early. Yes, I mean, she was 15 in this role. Yeah, very young. Yeah. And uh, she felt that horror films had pigeonholed her career, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. You know what? She's She was probably right. Yeah, I mean, I would like to have seen her, you know, in the 80s on Love Boat. Yeah. Or Fantasy Island. Mm -hmm. Or the Fall Guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She and, could have done it. And you know what? She probably was. She could have done anything. Oh, yeah. She had the chop. I've always liked Pamela Franklin. I, me too. Yeah, always. Me too. You have uh, James Villers, and you remember him. He's been in a lot of movies. He was just in 
um, Spectre, which we had shown yes. a few months ago. Yeah. Um, he was in Asylum. He was in Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. He was in The Damned. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. He's fantastic. Uh, playing the mother is Wendy Craig. Yeah, um, you know, she was in a British uh, television show from the 80s called The Nanny. Yeah. yeah. And she has done a lot of films. Yeah. Uh, playing the Aunt, Aunt Penelope is Jill Bennett. Yeah. And she was in For Your Eyes Only. She was in uh, The Haunting of Julia. And The Skull. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, playing Joey is... Uh, William Dix. Yeah. And I was very surprised uh, that he didn't have more of a film career. Uh, yes. Because I thought he was very, very, very good in this. At such a young age, he is very good because how many of you out there have been like, man, I can't wait to see this kid get it. Oh, yeah, you know. We're all waiting for him to get We're a few waiting cracks. For <laughs> yeah, a few cracks. I mean, I mean, seriously. But it goes to show how well his acting yes. is at such a young yeah, age. He's getting to you. Yeah, he is. Yes, yes, he is. Um, this was directed by Seth Holt. Yes. Yep. He had directed um, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb and A Taste of Fear. Yes. And the music is done by Richard Bennett. No relation to Jill. Right. Um, he had done the music for uh, The Man Who Could Cheat Death, which is a great movie. He had Christopher Lee and Hazel Court. Yes. He also did uh, the music for The Witches. Yes. And like most Hammer films, the music is very sparse. But always fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, always fantastic. Um, this was produced and written by Jimmy Sangster. Yes. And we had just talked about him because he was one of the co-writers on The Legacy. Yes. And uh, on a lesser note, it's rare that we bring you a black and white film, but they're so striking. This is a great one, and I love black and white films. I do too. I really do. I really do. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let's see where this one goes. Yeah, so let's get back to the nanny. trouble downstairs. It won't be long. What sort of trouble? Mrs. Fane sounds like food poisoning. Now behave yourself. And stop smoking. poison too. I didn't eat anything. Well, there, that proves it. Here you go. Father. Oh, Joey, I'm Dr. Medman. I'm going to have to take your mother to hospital, I'm afraid. Will she die? No, she'll be all right. But she's eaten something and we've got to pump it out of her tummy. What was it, Joey? What was it, Joey? I don't know. Steak and kidney pie. Ask her. She cooked it. Did you put something in that pie, Joey? No. I'll take that. I should have thrown it away. I'm so sorry. Where was it? In my medicine chest. Well, what have you got to say for yourself, Joey? Nothing. Well, we'll talk about it later. Right now, I'm going to take your mother to hospital. I'm not staying here. You'll do as you're told, young man. I'm not staying here with her. Now, listen, Joey. You might have killed your mother tonight. Do you understand that? I didn't do anything. And if you try to make me stay here with her alone, I'll run away. Is there anyone who can come over? Miss Penelope, Mrs. Fane's sister. Would you phone her, please? Yes, Doctor. Right. Well, your aunt will be here soon. 
We don't want any more nonsense from you tonight, understood? My father's right, Trina. You could have killed her. I didn't do it. She did. Your girl? Come on. The bottle was under your pillow. She put it there. Honest. Cross my heart and hope to die. You probably will. They'll hang you. Your dad's the same as all the others. What do you mean? He doesn't believe me either. They never do. What you've got to do is prove it. Prove what? That she was the one who put the stuff in your mother's supper. How can I prove it? I don't know. Oh, I don't believe you. I'm going. Good night. Well, I got here as soon as I could. This is so good of you, Miss Trent. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't been able to come. Oh, come on, Nanny. Since when have you been unable to cope with a ten-year-old boy? Not Master Joey. He's quite beyond me, I'm afraid. What you tell me is beyond everyone. Where is he? He's in his room. I told him you were here. It's nice to be welcome. Oh, this is a terrible bore, Nanny. You know that, don't you? I'm sure it is. I know how you hate to sleep away from home. As long as I'm appreciated by... Hello, young man. What have you been up to? Hello, Aunt Fenn. Mm, the face of innocence. <laughs> Suppose you think it's clever to poison your mother. I didn't. Mm. I'll unpack your bag. I've put you in Madam's room. Thank you, Nanny. Oh, there's some sleeping pills in my case. Put them on the, um, the bedside table. There's a dear. Very good, Madam. Are you going to take sleeping pills? Mm-hmm. Probably. Why? Help me to sleep. Can I sleep with you tonight? You most certainly cannot. What happens if you die in the night? You told Mummy you could drop down dead at any moment. Only if I excite or exert myself, and I don't intend to do either. And Joey, I want you to be very good and give me no trouble at all. See? I won't cause any trouble. That'll be a change from what I hear. Want to play draft? No. Hmm. All right. Bring them over here. Mm. Oh, Nanny, Joey and I are going to play draft. That's nice. Would you like something hot to drink? Chocolate. That'll go down very well. Master Joey. I'll make it all in one jug, so you won't have to worry. Worry? Something between Master Joey and me, Miss Penn. <sighs> You're much too good for me, Joey. No, Joey, no more, please. Why not? You've beaten me three times already. I couldn't stand it. We used to play for money at the school. Mm, so you told me. Yes, Nanny? Well, I hate to spoil the fun. It's time for Master Joey's bath. Up you go, Joey. You've got to swear like last night. Swear what? She's got to swear she won't come in the bathroom. I've never heard such nonsense in all my life. Quite all right, Miss Penn. I won't come in, Master Joey. Swear. I swear. Well, I think it's humiliating, Nanny. Really, I do. I don't mind. You wouldn't mind lying on the floor and having him walk all over your face. He's only a little boy. We have to make allowances. You make them. I don't have to. Yes, Miss Penn.
Chloe. She tried to kill me. What are you talking about? She sneaked in and she tried to push my head under. She pushed my head under. I saw something. She... She tried to kill you. That's right. She sneaked into the bathroom and pushed me under. I was all soaping. She couldn't keep hold. I don't believe you. You're always saying that. Well, it's because you tell such whoppers. It's not a whopper. She's tried it before. To kill you? That's right. After she killed Susie. She killed your sister? Sort of. Yes, she did. Turn that thing off. Come on, let's have it on. No. Not until you tell me about it. All about it. You said bloody. I once said that word and got clouted for it. And you'll get clouted again if you don't tell me. There isn't much to tell. One afternoon, she was supposed to be looking after us. Mum and Dad were out, and she was the only grown-up in the house. She wasn't supposed to go out. I mean, it wasn't her day off or anything like that. But I saw her leaving. You're a dirty little snake. I'm going to tell Nanny you said that. She made you wash your mouth out with soap. You can't. She's not here. Yes, she is. She isn't. I just saw her leave. She's looking after us. Shows how much she cares. She does care. She loves me. She loves me. Go away. I'm busy. Joey. What do you want? Can I play with you? No. Please. Go play by yourself. I've got nothing to do. Go play with your dolls. That's all girls can do anyway. Amanda, Mama's going to give you a nice bath. You sit there like a good 
good little girl while Mama gets the things. There you are, you naughty girl. Children, ball time. Where is Susie? I think I heard her in the bathroom. She drowned her. She drowned Susie. She turned on the taps and drowned her. Told them, didn't you? Of course I told them. She told them too. She said Susie and I had been playing boats in the bar. And I pushed Susie and ran away and hid. Oh, they believed her, of course. Of course. I'm cold. I'll get you something. I'm not going to wear any girls' clothes. I'll get you something of my father's. Casey. Get on the couch, madam. I wish to examine you. Oh, dark, should you think I ought? Take your clothes off. Really? What's that? It's an X-ray. Don't touch it. It's dangerous. What's so dangerous about it? I don't know. Daddy says if you get overexposed, you can die. I'd like to overexpose her. That would be great. Bring her up here. Put her on the couch. Tie her on the couch. And overexpose her. It would serve her right. She's balmy. Most grown-ups are. No, really, Barmy. Know what she did when she found Susie? What? There you are. I've been looking all over for you. She bathed her. She had all her clothes on and she was dead. And she bathed her and she talked to her while she was doing it. Just like it was all normal. What did you do? I watched her. I've never seen a really balmy person before. Then I went to phone someone. Um, oh, no, Master Joey. Oh, dear me, no. It's time for your bath. Cleanliness is next to godliness, Master Joey. Remember that. Susie never gives me any trouble. She's always been very good in her bath. As a special treat today, you can bath together. How's that? Now, come on, Susie is waiting for you. You're making it up. No, I'm not. She would have killed you. Of course she would, but I didn't give her the chance. That's why they sent me to that place. Why? 
I wouldn't eat anything in case she poisoned me. I wouldn't sleep in case she came in and smothered me. I wouldn't do anything. You know what they said about me? What? I read it in Dr. Beemaster's office one day. Jury Fane is suffering from a massive guilt complex caused by the accidental killing of his sister. Shows how much they knew. Said I was glad when they sent me to that school. I didn't have to worry about her anymore. Aren't you scared now you're home again? No, I can look after myself. You came running up here. That wasn't because I was scared. Why, then? I wanted to tell someone. There's no one down there except Aunt Pen, and she doesn't believe me. You must be scared. Dr. Beemaster says that scares are in your head, and if you face up to them, they go away. I'm facing up to them. Let's go and watch telly. Master Joey, wherever have you been? He was upstairs in my apartment. I've just got back from the hospital. How is Madam? No, oh, she'll be all right. A couple of days' rest. Well, in you go, young man. Thank you for bringing him down. Oh, no trouble. Don't worry about the coat. Good night. Good night. Well, Joey, aren't you going to apologize? You heard your aunt, Ben. Apologize to her. Don't you come near me! Joey, not you if you believe her. wonder I'm not stone dead. You realize that, don't you, Nanny? It's too bad of you letting me in for all this. I'm sorry, Miss Penn, truly sorry. But it's only for tonight. Mr. Fane will be home tomorrow. I have a few things to tell him about that, that monster he's bred. It's, it's all right, Nanny, I can manage. Well, I'd like to help you, Miss Penn. I can manage, I said. I'm not my sister. As you wish. Good night, Miss Pym. Good night, Nanny.
do you? I'm taking Master Joey an extra pillow. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't wake him up, Nanny. That's all I can take of young Joey. What may I ask for you doing after this? Making myself a cup of tea. It's bad for you late at night. If you get back to bed, Nanny will bring you a glass of warm milk. I don't want a glass of warm milk. I want a cup of tea. Very well, a cup of tea then. Thank you. And Nanny, don't take that pillow in. I'll never forgive you if you wake him up. you telling us when we were small. Children shouldn't have pillows. Was the word you used? Um, overlay. Yes. They might overlay themselves. Master Joey is not a baby, Miss Penn. What happened in the bathroom, Nanny? I'm sure I don't know what you mean. What happened? Miss Penn, go back to bed and I'll bring you your tea. What happened? You're not well. Let Nanny... Don't come near me. How could you? He said you wouldn't go into the bathroom. He made a promise that you wouldn't. He made you swear. No, did I? You're lying. Miss Penn? All been lies, hasn't it? The poison virgin. Isn't Joey at all? Now, don't excite yourself. Give me that pillow! See what you've done to yourself, Miss Penn.
Does that feel better? I'm sure it does. Poor Master Joey. He has a lot to answer for. So many troubles. All laid at his doorstep. Master Joey wants to get rid of his old nanny. Did you know that? And where would poor madam be? She's little more than a child herself. Without nanny, she'd be helpless. I gave Master Joey his chance, but he wouldn't take it. Something doesn't stop this chatter. One day somebody will believe him. And Nanny will have to go. You know this pen. I really thought Master Joey was lying at first about Miss Susie. That day I'd had the most dreadful experience. Dreadful. There was a telephone call from a doctor. I wouldn't have gone, what with Madam being out and leaving the children. But the doctor more or less said, if I didn't go, he'd come round and get me. Or send for the police. Police? Now, I couldn't have had that, could I? I took a taxi to the address he'd given me. When I got there, I thought I was in the wrong place. It was all so... so dirty. Please come in. That's right, she's dead. About an hour ago. She wanted to see you. Why? She simply asked me to phone you. Did you know her? I've been with her for the past 14 hours, watching her die. Why didn't you phone me sooner? She didn't tell me until she knew she was dying. As long as she thought she had a chance of pulling through, she just didn't want to see you. Do you want me to make the arrangements? What? I'm asking if you want her properly taken care of. Of course. Yeah, so it's about 25 years too late, isn't it? You were too busy looking after other people's children, weren't you? Not enough time to spare for your own. Well, she can't help you. She's dead. She was pregnant, you know. Man, not much chance of looking after the child. She couldn't bear the thought of bringing up an illegitimate baby the way she was brought up. Better get rid of it. This isn't a very choice neighborhood, but they do know how to look after themselves. In a pinch, gone for what? For five or ten pounds, you can buy yourself an abortion. He left her on the doorstep to bleed to death. I take it you know something about medicine. Would you like to hear the details? No. Why not? She's your flesh and blood. Don't you want to hear how she died? Not exactly in the Harley Street class, these backstreet abortionists. They want their money first before they get to work. And they're not very fussy about sterilization. Some of them don't even bother to wash their hands first. And they don't care where they do it either. He went on and on. He wouldn't stop. 
I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to get out. I had to. I don't know how far I walked. It must have been miles. Suddenly, I was terribly tired. I felt sick. I still couldn't believe it all. I thought perhaps I might wake up in a moment and find out it was a bad dream. There were the children. I had to look after them. Are you hiding from men? been looking all over for you. Thought your old nanny had forgotten you, didn't you? Thought you'd have to have your bath on your own. Oh, dear. Soap in your eye. Playing tricks on your old nanny. <laughs> Susie, stop it. I can't have Master Joey tell on his old nanny, can I? Who will look after Matt? And all those other little children looked after by nannies. You see, Miss Penn, being a nanny is based on trust. It is so important that parents trust us. It's not myself I'm thinking about. I've never been one for self. It's all those others like me, all those nannies who have devoted their lives to taking care of other people's children. They're the ones I'm thinking about. You would have understood, Miss Penn. I know you would.
make it difficult for Nanny, Master Joey. What'll happen to her, I don't know. But she's a sick woman. And they'll take that into account, of course. I want to see Joey. He wants to see you. I know it's four o'clock in the morning, but, well, after all he's been through. He's here? He's outside. I want to see him. You sure you're well enough? Doctor, I'm perfectly all right. I want to see my son. Joey. Joey. I don't hate you, Mummy. Come here, darling. I didn't try to poison you, Mummy. I know, darling. I know all about it now. I'm sorry about Nanny. Don't think about it anymore. I'll look after you now. I promise. I'm sure you will. I'll learn to cook even. And I can get your breakfast in the mornings. I'll bring it in on a tray and a flower. I'll clean Daddy's shoes, too. I used to clean shoes when I was at school. I was jolly good at it. I'll make the beds, too. I can help you. Thank you. 
Well, did you see that ending coming? Yeah, you know, through most of this movie, I'm really thinking, is Joey's just an evil little boy? He's going to get it. Yes. Betty Davis is going to hand it to him. I can't wait. Right? I can't he, wait. He's just an evil little boy. And it's not Joey. Right. It's not Joey. I know. And Betty Davis, you know, her mind snaps and she plays it so very cool. Yes. You and know, you, you, you got to admit, you have sympathy for her character. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely. Did. But not for Joey. No. I even, believe him. Even in the end, even in the end, you know... The only disappointing part of this entire movie is we didn't get to see him get those couple cracks he deserved. He still deserved them. He did. Yeah. He did. Now, when he hit his head on the windowsill, mm. that was very well done. That was very and well done. I enjoyed done. it. Yeah. Makes you makes you cringe. Yeah. Yeah. But I enjoyed it. I <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, oh, she putting him in yeah. the tub. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. And I guess in a way, you know, she does hand it to him a little bit. Just you a know, little bit. A little bit. But, you know, there are some very dark themes in this film. Yeah, you know, I mean, she's, you have the imagery of her in your own mind, you know, bathing this dead little girl. Yes. I mean, it, it's, it's, um, it's scary. Yes. You know, it is. Yes, it I mean, is. I mean, it's, it's disturbing. Yes, isn't it's it? It's something very, yeah. um, it's very realistic. Something yeah. like that could happen. Yeah. Now. You know, they say that pioneers of any genre suffer the slings and arrows. And Betty Davis was a pioneer. She was a legend. Yeah, you know, um, we got to talk about Betty Davis on this film. Oh, absolutely. You know, um, now she was notorious for being hard to work with, and rightfully mm. so, you know. Um, you know, she would argue with Seth Holt, the director on this film about his directing and directing her. Yes. You know, I mean, he said it was hell working with her. It would be. Right? Because, like I said, a legend suffered the slings and arrows, so they got some slings and arrows of their own. Right. And they're going to pass right. them around, yeah. but they're going to make you better. Exactly. You know, I guess she had the flu, you know, through most of this movie, yes. right? You know, but she would drink out of the, you know, her, her, her co-worker's glasses, and she would, <coughs> you know, cough on them. She's still smoking. Still smoking. You know, just making things difficult yes. for everybody. She tried to put the moves on Jimmy Sangster, I guess. Right, right. She tried to seduce him. That's what he said. Yeah. And, you know, she wouldn't come out of her hotel room until they found a genuine wool uh, nanny outfit. Yeah. Even though in the 60s they had changed to these modern, lightweight cotton ones, she was like, no, this is how my character is. Right. So our analogy for that would be like, that's like trying to play... Some music with Chuck Berry <laughs> or Paul McCartney. Absolutely. You oh, know, yeah, absolutely. What are you going to tell them? Yeah. They're the architects right. of rock and roll. Right. Right. Be like, hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Yeah. Change that bridge. You wouldn't dare say that. Well, you, you wouldn't. Know? You wouldn't dare wouldn't. say it. You know, and, you know, the joy of working with someone like that, like and in this case, Betty Davis, is, you know, you're a better actor or actress for it. Yes, absolutely. And even though William Dix didn't go on to do anything really much after this, you know, for probably most of his life, if he was sitting at the pub, he's probably like, yeah, yeah, I was in a film with Betty Davis. Right. Yeah, exactly. You know that scene where I climbed in through the window with the towel? I wasn't wearing nothing. <laughs> that was my choice. Right. As my character. Right. You know, Pam, she liked it. I can call her Pam. I call her Pam. Yeah. <laughs> it's pro it's probably true because you know working with Betty Davis would give you that clout. And it would for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. It don't matter what the movie is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know I'd true. be telling everybody. Absolutely. I'd be like, "Do you see that guy holding the plate in the background? That's me." <laughs> I still worked with Betty Davis. Me and Betty were cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but overall, as an overlooked forgotten film, it's surprising. That this is it really is yeah it really is and you know it's not like your typical hammer movie mm -mm. you know um i think you know this is as good as any hammer movie i've seen i agree i agree this you know is a very very good film yeah. um you know it doesn't have your monster in it but it's it's horrific 
Yeah, it is. And yeah. it has it has its themes in it that make it horrific. Yes. You know? And once again, it's something that kind of stays with you. It definitely does. You know? Yeah. And I think those are the best kind. They definitely are. I enjoyed it. Me too. Yep. And we thank you for being here with us at Newcastle After Dark. We hope you join us again for our lost treasure in cinema. And until next time, good, good night. night.